Hello, in this work you will determine the coefficients of viscosity for several solutions. For starting, let's introduce some useful theoretical notions. Fluids are substances that can flow. Amongst these, there are liquids and gases, which we call real fluids. Viscosity is an internal friction force that opposes to the flow of real fluids. This force is due to the intermolecular attraction forces between fluids molecules. If the trajectory of any two small volumes of real fluid don't intersect, then the flow is laminar. Otherwise, we characterize the flow as turbulent. The transition between the two flow regimes is related to a parameter specific to each real fluid called coefficient of absolute viscosity. Usually, this coefficient is marked using the Greek letter eta. The viscosity of blood depends on many factors, such as protein content, hematocrit or temperature. The hematocrit states the percentage of red blood cells in the blood, with normal values around 40%, and with slightly larger values for men compared to women. The viscosity of blood increases in the case of patients suffering from polyglobulia when the number of red blood cells rises above normal values in diabetes mellitus and in situations of severe dehydration. The viscosity of blood decreases in the case of different pathological states such as anemia or low carbon dioxide blood content. In this practical work, you will determine the coefficient of viscosity values for different solutions using the Ubelochde viscometer. This method is indirect, relative, and consists in measuring the flowing time of a constant volume of solution through a capillary tube. To this end, you will use a viscometer a chronometer, Berzelius glass, three study solutions, distilled water, a syringe with a plastic hose, and a clamp. The viscometer is a glass tube with three branches. Two of these branches have reservoirs. The lower one must be initially filled with solution to a level in between the two marks. The upper one has a well-defined volume between two other marks and sits above a capillary tube that ensures a laminar flow of the liquid. Attention! Before and after each measurement, rinse the interior of the viscometer with distilled water. Using a Berzelius glass, fill the lower reservoir with distilled water to a level between the two marks. Block the ventilation branch using a clamp. Connect tightly the syringe hose to the branch with the upper container and, by suction, pull the water in this branch to a level above the second mark. Release the syringe hose, then the clamp. After emptying the capillary branch, pour the water out through the same branch it was filled through. Grab the viscometer by the bottom metallic part and tilt it to remove the contained liquid. First determinations will be performed for the reference liquid, which, in this case, is distilled water. Follow the previously mentioned steps for rising the water through the capillary tube to a level above the upper mark. Release the two branches. Press the start button to start the chronometer when the water level reaches the upper mark. Continue watching the water flow through the capillary tube. Press the stop button to stop the chronometer when reaching to the lower level. Write the time of flow in the corresponding table. Reset the chronometer. Measure two more times the flow time of water 
and record the values in the table. Repeat these steps and determine three flow times for each of the study solutions. Fill the table with all the values and calculate the mean values for the time of flow of each solution. Attention! Don't cast the solutions. Pour them back in their containers. The values of density and coefficient of viscosity for distilled water are given in the book. The densities of study solutions are written on the labels of their containers. Calculate the values of absolute, relative and specific viscosity coefficients using the given formulas.